Hey guys, Wednesday's lesson of the day on Thursday today. Uh, I wanna go over some of the canthoplasty procedures and I also wanna show people how we do consults. So I'm sitting here with Jen, Jennifer England, and um, we're not gonna show the photos of the patients that we're looking at, but the way the consult process works and how it goes so well uh, for us in finding patients that we can really help out and who match the practice is that patients send in an inquiry asking about a procedure. We send them an email back asking certain questions uh, to see what their goals are, what they're trying to have changed to sort of really see what, they're, um, what they think is going on or what they think can be improved. And then we have them send us photos. Uh, the photos I take a look at as well as looking at their history and it doesn't take me very long and um, I can tell very quickly if somebody would be a candidate for a procedure whether it's by me or somebody else or if they really don't need surgery at all or if they're barking up the wrong tree meaning they don't need a procedure uh, maybe they need just regular skin care or something like that uh, so Jen you want to show how it works do you have anybody ready Without showing a picture, we're just gonna, you can talk out loud and uh, you can say blank person is, we'll just act like, yeah, blank person is this many years old, is from, we need to know where they're from because that changes how we do the consultation a bit, whether it's virtual or local. Um, and she shows me a picture and says, this patient is interested in analyze everything or facelift or brow lift or okay, this person is from florida interested in the aura lift is florida she's, aura lift she's about 60 well i have to years old, so i look at the picture she's about 60 so yes aura lift would be fantastic she's got malar edema that we can't improve and yeah, that'll be fine, actually. Yeah, her eyes are still pretty good. Yeah, so aura lift, yes. So that's an example of one where we look at it and we say yes. And that means now not that I'm going to do the surgery. I still have to talk to the person and um, go through everything to see if it's a practical option for them and if I think it's a good idea once I talk to them. So uh, we say that this makes patients candidates for consultation, not necessarily candidate for uh, surgery. So Jen, uh, Dr. Chopra wants to see your face. What the? He, Chopra, oh. he wants to see your face. Oh. Where is he? <laughs> I don't know, he's there somewhere. There he Hi, goes. Barbara. Okay, so that's that, and she'll show me another one because uh, we'll continue the consultation process so we don't waste Jen's time here. Um, some patients we reply that, no, they're not a candidate for surgery, and Patients then want to go in depth about why and what else they can do, but that's a consultation. And um, at this point, we can only do consultations on people who I think I can help. Uh, otherwise, we tell them, no, we can't, or we give them a guide as to where to go. We can't, but this person can. We can't, you shouldn't do this procedure, or maybe go do this procedure. Uh, we don't get super in depth unless we do a consultation and really take on someone as a patient. Next example. Okay patient is from LA, so it'll be an in-person, and she's uh -huh. interested in neck lift and weekend lift. Okay, how old is she? Uh, she's um, th actually 34. Okay, yeah, she can do weekend lift and, yeah, or profound. Yeah, weekend lift or profound. Okay. Okay. So that's that. So that's how it goes in case everybody's wondering. Um, now, the lesson of the day, which is uh, something I saw in three patients today, were shortened canthi or uh, dystopia, lateral rounding, scleral show, whatever you want to call it. Uh, why this happens is because uh, the patient will get a lower blepharoplasty with skin excision. And typically, there's two types of skin excision. One is vertical. One is uh, oblique or diagonal or superior lateral. Uh, when you do a vertical skin excision or a skin pinch, you have directly put uh, exertion on the lower part of the lid and most of the eyelid skin ages in this direction. So it aged this way, but you took it out that way. And that's sort of where the stress on the lower lid begins. It's not necessarily from weakening the muscle, which is what most people think. It's from these small dynamic changes on a very weak muscle. 
Uh, so it's not that you paralyze the nerve or anything like that just by elevating skin, although it can happen. Um, it's mainly because uh, it was pulled slightly this way when it aged that way already, uh, where what you really should be doing is removing the skin up in this direction. And the only way to do that properly is to make an incision under the eye, bring it out over that way, release a little bit of skin, let it go up, trim it, and then you have to choose at that point if you want to tighten the eyelid temporarily or not. Um, tightening the eyelid is called a canthopexy, and you can do a full direct canthopexy, indirect canthopexy, closed canthopexy, or open canthopexy. These are different ways that you can pexy or tack up the side of the eye. The more you dissect around here uh, on someone's eyelid who has good support already, the more you disrupt the natural connections and what happens over time or can happen over time is that the eye can start to medialize and pull down because you messed with the connections around the canthus. So it's not just the canthal ligament and tendon, you also have the lateral retinaculum, uh, which will be this little tendinous fiber that separates your upper orbicularis from your lower that extends out and that itself has uh, a little bit of connection to the deeper tissues over there, although it's not dense, but it is something. And when you disconnect that and you blink and you make eye any kind of uh, gesture with the eye, the eye pulls this way every time because it's, it's anchored to the medial canthus. The medial canthus is connected to your NOE region and it has two muscles that are near the medial canthus. One set of muscles is the orbicularis, which is floating. And then deep to that, you have the, what we call the orbicularis ligament or sling, which is actually not orbicularis. It's the nasal levator muscles and the deeper portion of the orbicularis, which they glide over each other actually. Uh, so all of these are anchored down onto periosteum and the orbicularis is floating attached to the medial canthus. Uh, this is very strong. This is already weaker. So over time, the eye tends to pull medially over time. If you disrupt it, um, it will it'll shorten and go um, lower faster. The issue that people have uh, with this, which is another thing that I saw, is that young patients want to change the shape of the canthus to get a cat eye or fox eye look or to get lateral suspension over there to lengthen it. And they saw in some photo from Iran or Turkey, uh, usually that someone had this done in it, they thought it looked great. Now, in most of those situations, I tell them, I know you think it looked great, I think it looks weird and it's only gonna get worse. So even though you're trying to tighten it, the second you do this on somebody with good support, you lose that natural support and it starts going in the other direction and it pulls down. So those uh, procedures where they're doing the cat eye or trying to change the shape of the eye are very bad procedures to do unless somebody already has an issue and you have to correct it. So if somebody has an issue and you need to correct it, fine, that's why you do a canthopexy or canthoplasty. If somebody already has a natural connection there, there's no way you're gonna make it better. Realize that. The only natural way that makes the eye on the corner look better is on somebody who has heavy uh, brow and you lift the brow off of it and that cants the eye back up and it can take the weight off of it. So I think that is a fair thing to do and you definitely can do that safely on most patients, on younger patients. Brow lifting doesn't work so well because their cheek is so dense and you're really trying to spread out this area. If it's dense, it's just gonna pull back down unless you do an entire mid face lift with it. And then you've really just lifted somebody uh, who didn't need it and they end up looking more surprised because you end up making the space here bigger. Um, what do we have there? Oh, okay. Are you ready for that? Yes, oh. the next consult. So the consultation process continues. Perfect. So she is about, uh, looks like 44. And 44 she years old. wants her jowls tightened and refined facial skin. So Perfect, and where's she from? Uh, she's from here, so it'd be an in-person. Okay, yeah. Okay, or a lift and upper bluff would be perfect. Maybe right tail of brow. Yeah, or a lift, upper bluff, right tail of brow. Okay, perfect. So that's how the consultation process goes. Now, hopefully people understand um, and don't get offended. Uh, it's, you know, we have a lot of consults to go through and we don't sit around all week just consulting. We do you have to operate because that's the fun part of all this for everybody, for me and for the patients. So that will be the end of my canthoplasty talk, but I hope uh, people understand why that happens from skin excision. Most lower blepharoplasties are from fat repositioning at this point where we just take fat and tr drop it down into the tear trough at our office. Other offices do it differently and can still get good results. 
doing fat reduction and fat grafting. Um, but we are doing less and less skin excision and doing chemical peels for the skin there rather than cutting it away because most people here have wrinkles, not skin excess. Um, skin excess does happen in some patients. However, in other patients, uh, most patients have just skin quality issues. You don't treat wrinkling and skin quality issues by removing or stretching skin. That is a mistake that has been made many times over the past 50 years that give people weird results with facelifts, weird results with eyelids and things like that. So if somebody has excess, you get rid of the excess. If someone has wrinkles, you improve the wrinkles, not with stretching it. You can't improve a wrinkle by stretching it. You can take weight off of one, I get that. Uh, but you have to improve the skin quality. They're two separate things. And if you're treating wrinkles and skin quality issues with lifting, you only get weird dysmorphic type surgery, which I say that because the doctors doing that have some level of dysmorphia and they don't see that things look unnatural. So um, that's that. If you guys want to see this, I will post it for all to see. And I hope everyone has a lovely Thursday.